everyone, it's Ms. Vasquez for Text Study. And for today's lesson, you don't need anything except your brain. Today for Text Study, you will be able to recognize common types of text. Those are texts that we see every day. So we might be thinking about storybooks, we could be thinking about informational texts, or we could be thinking about poems. Today, we're gonna look closely at books that are poems that are, yeah, that are poems. Now, the very first thing you want to do when you identify the common type of text is you're going to look at the cover. You're going to look at the, yeah, you're going to look at the cover. You'll notice any illustrations. You'll notice whether or not there's an author or an illustrator. And whether or not there is a cover is so important because sometimes when I see poems, I notice that there's no cover, that they're not in any books. The next thing that you're going to do is you're gonna look at photographs, headings, charts, and stuff like that to identify whether or not it's an informational text. Now an informational text is different from a storybook because the author wants to teach us something. And a lot of the times we have real photographs and stuff like headings, we might see an index. Then we have our storybooks. Now we think, hmm, does it tell a story? We've read so many stories. Now, the next thing that we do is we're gonna name the type of text. Now, a storybook is different from an informational text because it's something that's not true. And the author wants us to read it for fun. Now, we name the type of text. Like I said, we're gonna think whether or not it's a storybook, an informational text, or a poem. Poems are so special because they're written in a different type of way. Poems have stanzas, that's groups of text together, sentences. Now they have special line spacing. We might see the text that's all together in the middle of a page or to one side of a page. And a lot of the times poems rhyme. They, do you remember what a rhyme is? Yeah, that's when two words make the same ending sound. So today, we're gonna look closely at a poem or poems. I have a special book called If I Were in Charge of the World. Now, If I Were in Charge of the World is a book that has poems in it. So we're gonna look closely at this poem right here before you look closely at another one. No, no. I refuse to. No, I don't choose to. No, I most certainly don't. You've made a mistake. If you thought you could make me. No, 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 I won't. No, you could beat me. No, you could eat me. Up from my head to my toes and inside your belly. Loudly and yelling. I keep saying no, no, you could sock me, feed me some broccoli, tickle me till I turn blue, but in between giggles and sniggles and wriggles, I'd say no to you. No, you could tease me, please, pretty please me, cry till your eyes washed away, you could beg till you're old. But I'd look at you cold. And no is what I'd say. No, you could shove me. You could love me with all the kisses and squishy and wet. You could scratch me with claws, but I'd say no. Because, because, because I forget. So here's a poem I just read by Judy Vorst. Do you recognize anything special about this poem? What do you notice? At the top of the poem, I see the title. And the title of this poem is No. Now, I said earlier that poems have stanzas. That's the group of lines. Sometimes they're like sentences that are put together in a poem. Right here. These lines, these are a stanza. Now, there's another stanza right here, 
and a few more over here. They're like little paragraphs in the poem that help tell the story. Now, I noticed that after all of the stanzas, we have some line to separate them. Now, did you notice anything while you were listening closely? Yeah, I noticed that some of the words rhyme. I hear, mistake, make, don't, won't. Those are all words that have the same ending sound. Now this poem is different than some of the other poems that we read this year in school because this poem is found in a book. This poem does not have illustrations, but some poems might have a small picture to go with it. Right now, we're gonna look closely at one of the books that we've been reading this week, and you're gonna tell me whether or not you think it's a poem. We're gonna look closely at Brick by Brick, and it's by Charles R. Smith, and it was illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Hmm. Under a hazy, hot summer sun, many hands work together as one. The president of a new country needs a new home. So many hands work together as one. Black hands, white hands, free hands, slave hands, slave hands dig, saw, and break bone, laying the foundation for the president's home. Rented as property, slave hands labor, as diggers of stones, as diggers of stone, sawyers and brick layers. Diggers swing axes, to break up stone, laying the foundation for the president's home. Jerry, Jess, Charles, Len, Dick, Bill, Harry, Jim. Slave hands swing axes 12 hours a day, but slave owners take the slave hands' pay. Slave hands sweat under a bright Sun, slave hands toil until each day is done. Now I'm going to stop reading this text right there. I want to talk about the things that I see when I read the text, when I'm looking at the words, and what I hear. Now it's important for you to know that a storybook tells a story and sometimes poems also tell stories too that we're able to hear and see. How do you think this text is written? Hmm, I notice that the text is written in groups of lines. I'll show you again. We have two groups of lines right here. That's called a stanza, it's called a yeah, and the stanzas are separated by line spacing. And I noticed that all of the words are lined up on one side. The beginning of the lines are just like the other poem that we just read. Now, I noticed something different between my first poem or book and the one I'm reading right now. This one looks just like a regular storybook. I see illustrations on every page. And these illustrations are also helping tell a story. Now it's important that when you tell me or tell any teacher or any adult the kind of text that you are reading, that you not only just look at the illustration and whether or not it has a cover, but what the words sound like and what the words look like. When I was reading, I also noticed words that rhyme. Not all poems rhyme, but some words do. Now, this book 
is special or it's different than the books that we've read before because it is written just like a poem. A poem on every single page that keeps going and going to tell one story. So it's a really long poem. Now what you can do at home is you can look at the different types of books that you have and you can tell your families whether or not they are written as a poem, as an informational text, or a storybook. And don't forget to send your teachers pictures too.